Coming up on 730 this morning, both Washington senators are responding to the events at the U.S. Capitol. This morning, one of them thinks this is grounds to remove the president from office. If you're wondering when you may be able to get a COVID-19 vaccine this morning, Washington State has more answers. Now, who's next on the list? Now lawmakers are asking to invoke the 25th Amendment, but what does that mean? We'll talk about it all coming up. And we've got reports of some icy spots on the roads as you head out the door this morning. I'll let you know where those reports are coming in from and what your odds of seeing ice are as you head out the door. Up with Krim begins now. Good to have you here with us on Up with Krem. On your screen right now are two very different images. On the left, what the Capitol looked like the day President Trump was inaugurated. And on the right, what it looked like just yesterday when a mob stormed the building. Exactly two weeks from when President-elect Joe Biden will be inaugurated. This morning, we're covering what happened at the Capitol. And now, what comes next? But first, we do want to check in with meteorologist Jeremy Lagu this morning in the Weather Center. Jeremy, what can people expect as they head out the door on this Thursday? You know, it's one of those days where we have a little bit of moisture lingering from yesterday's rain, and that rain came to an end in the wee hours of this morning. Now, as you head out the door, you're likely going to see wet roads, and depending on where you are, you might just find a little bit of ice. Before many cars took to the road this morning, we had reports of ice along Interstate 90 just west of Spokane and along I-195, excuse me, just north of Pullman. Those two locations did have accidents reported from people losing control on the ice. So if you are in those locations, just be aware that you are likely going to encounter that ice as you head over an overpass or a bridge or something where air flows beneath the road. That is where the road will ice before anywhere else. And just be cognizant that that could be the case, even though temperatures are starting to rise. We'll quickly climb into the mid and upper 30s today. And as that happens, we'll improve visibility up and over Lookout Pass and up in Deer Park. And even in OMAC, we're seeing a little bit of patchy fog form in the early hours of the day. Coeur d'Alene seeing reduced visibility, but you can still see about five miles, so it's not too entirely bad early on this morning. But we are keeping an eye on our next storm as it works its way toward us. Think cloud cover throughout the day today. And as we scoot into the day tomorrow, that's when we will see our next round of showers start to arrive. And those will start in the early hours in the basin, then work their way toward us throughout the day. Notice it starts out as rain for us here in Spokane and a bit of a wintry mix around us, but that sticks to those higher elevations through the day. So what you need to know is that it's mostly rain with a possible bit of wintry mix. Temperatures just way too warm. Today, we're up near 40 degrees once again across the inland northwest. Jeremy, thank you to our big story. Now, here are three things to know this morning about the events on Capitol Hill. New this morning, Congress confirmed Democrat Joe Biden as the presidential election winner. Vice President Mike Pence presided over that joint session and announced the final tally. Joseph R. Biden Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. That announcement came hours after a violent mob loyal to President Donald Trump stormed the U.S. Capitol. Trump, who had repeatedly refused to concede the election, did say in a statement made early this morning there will be a smooth transition of power on Inauguration Day. Number two, four people died in the riots. One of them was shot by U.S. Capitol Police and the others died during medical emergencies. And 14 police officers were hurt. At least 52 people were arrested in the chaos and police found two pipe bombs one each outside of the Democratic and Republican National Committee. A San Diego man believes his wife was the woman who died during the Capitol riots. Aaron Babbitt says videos he's seen of the dead woman is his wife. However, he has not been able to confirm if that is her with police or D.C. hospitals. Number three, America's four living former presidents took to social media yesterday after that mob of Trump supporters overran the Capitol building. The attack has been widely condemned, particularly by former presidents Barack Obama and George W. Bush, among many others criticizing President Trump. 
Former President Jimmy Carter also released this statement saying in part, this is a national tragedy and is not who we are as a nation. Dana Marie. Well, local leaders have made statements against the attack. All of them have condemned the violent mob. And here is what they had to say, many of them speaking out on social media. Now, in a statement, Spokane Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers denounced rioters. She said, quote, what we have seen today is unlawful and unacceptable. I have decided I will vote to uphold the Electoral College results, and I encourage Donald Trump to condemn and put an end to this madness. Now, Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward also released a statement about the mob. She said, quote, we watched with great disappointment and heavy hearts the violence and disruption today in the U.S. Capitol building. Freedom of speech and expression are hallmarks of our country and violence and property and destruction have no place in that process. This was a sad day for our country. She continued on to say, as members of our community, we feel compelled to respond to the national conversation or make their voices heard. Spokane expects that it will be done respectfully, peacefully, and appropriately. Now, across the state, other lawmakers also weighed in on the situation, including some that were in the Capitol building when it was mobbed. Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal was stuck in the Capitol while the mob attacked. So here is a video of her ducking down in the upper area of the House chambers. She told us she was stuck there and had trouble moving out of her seat because of a recent surgery. She later said it was an exhausting and incredibly difficult day. House Republican Jamie Herrera Butler of Southwest Washington was also at the Capitol. She condemned the attacks on Twitter. We, I mean, they barricaded the doors with historic furniture. I never thought I'd see this day when there, when we were, when I really felt like we were under siege. That's exactly what happened in the, in, in the Capitol today. Both Washington senators have also released statements condemning the attacks. Now, taking to Twitter, Senator Patty Murray condemned what she called hateful fueled violence. And she did tell everyone she was safe before mentioning that every leader should be committed to a peaceful transition of power. Then Senator Maria Cantwell, Cantwell also released a statement. She also condemns the violence at the Capitol. Now, the breach of the Capitol wasn't only just local and national news, but it made headlines worldwide. Tweets from world leaders flooded social media. We see one from Prime Minister Boris Johnson from Britain tweeting disgraceful scenes in the U.S. Congress. NATO Secretary General said the outcome of this Democratic election must be respected. And then American allies called it an assault on democracy. I, I feel terribly for what's happening there. I, I really do. I mean, they are one of our closest friends and, and partners, the United States. Germany's foreign minister took aim at President Trump, saying he and his supporters should finally accept the decision of the American voters and stop trampling on democracy. A group of pro-Trump activists marched in support of the American president. The Japanese government said it still hoped for a peaceful and democratic transfer of power. Congress has officially approved the Electoral College votes, but does President Trump have anything left that he can do to stay in office? After the break, our Verify team looks into the situation in the White House. Protests broke out in our state's capital of Olympia as well. Coming up, what happened when multiple people broke into the grounds of the governor's mansion?